Welcome to Harvest Valley Worship Center's Sermon of the Week. You can discover more about our church, pastors, and special guests at hvwc.com. We hope that you are blessed by today's message. So with that, I'm, I'm really honored and so pleased to be able um, to introduce all of you to a spiritual father of mine, someone who, uh, when I moved to Sandpoint, Idaho, I went church hunting. How many of you ever been church hunting? Okay, you were like, I got to find the right place, right? I got to find the, and, um, and so I had tried, from what I knew, I, I knew I needed a charismatic church that believed in the full operation of the Holy Spirit, not just in word, but in action. Okay, so that was really important to me. The second thing that was really important was authentic worship. People who worship genuinely. It was not a show, it's not a performance. You'll notice we're set up in a circle because we're singing to an audience of one, not to you, not for your sake, right? We'll, we'll lead you where we're going, but we're singing to him, right? And I, we just needed, we, we, I just knew I needed that. And so um, and the other thing is I knew I needed a mentor. I needed somebody who was willing to pour into my life. And so I went church shopping and I was super sad. Like three months into moving to Sandpoint, I'm like, what in the world? And then my, uh, it was a great story, but too long for today. But my ex-in-laws that I was living with, okay, <laughs> at the time, they said, you know, there's this church kind of on Highway 95, you should go check that out. I think it might be kind of your flavor because uh, I guess we'd had a reputation of having some flavor. So, um, so I showed up and, and uh, on the, it was, you know, just the little uh, building over there, right? That was it. There was no, that you know, there was uh, one men's stall, two women's, like we hadn't read on the bathrooms yet. There was no littles. Room. It's just an open room with a kitchen. And so uh, we, I show up, and there's this bubbly guy on guitar singing his heart out. There's a couple other, you know, people up there with him. And like, oh, but it was genuine. It was real worship. And, uh, man, he preached a word that convicted my soul, not made me feel better, or just wasn't a, well, it wasn't a life improvement program message. <laughs> you know, like, here's six steps to live a better life today. No, it was, you need Jesus I was convicted, poured my life out. And then the, uh, I said, hey, would you be interested in getting coffee? You know, it's like, sure, no problem. We sit and we have coffee. He says, Chris, I don't care where you go to church. I'll mentor you. I see God's calling on your life. I see, you know, God's doing something in you and I'd love to meet with you. I don't care if you go to our church or not. I'm like, I'm all in. I had met with four pastors and it went really horribly. So, so it was like, you know, yeah, so that was exactly what I needed as a broken, fairly new believer, and um, and Dean mentored me for the two years that he that we were here together, um, and then uh, Dean left and went to Hermiston where he's been, um, and then we had another pastor come in the same time that that pastor came in. I met Mika. And, uh, and he, that pastor, Nick Higgins at the time, married Mika and me. And, and we, uh, uh, two weeks later, he resigned and they confirmed our call to ministry. So, you know, it just like boom, 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 you know, it just went that way. But um, so much of, of my understanding of the heart of the Father of God came from this man. So much of what God has done in this place um, is from, is his legacy of what he's poured in here. He actually laid the foundation of this building here that we are in today. And so um, it's no small thing that he's here. It's actually the first time we've been here together in 13 years, more than that, since I've been pastoring 12 years. It's the first time that we've, we've, we've been in this building at the same time for this sake. And uh, so it's kind of a special day for me. It's probably special for Dean and Wanda. Um, Wanda's an amazing children's minister. And you know, it was funny. She was, it was great. When I was here, I didn't actually get to know Wanda very well because she's like, don't talk to me, talk to Dean. <laughs> because she knew that I needed, I needed the father in my life. You know, and I, I've never even had that conversation, but it was so, it was so good. It was so good. And um, one of the things that I think is uh, that the Lord is doing today 
is he's, he's actually closing a season and he's opening a new season for us. So I felt like we should just pray um, quickly um, as, uh, as Dean comes up, um, and then I'll let Dean go from there, okay? So if you'll stand with me one more time. If anybody's feeling like they want to pitch in for an AC unit in this church, you know, you feel free. Um, but it's feeling a little warm this morning. Um, so, Father, we thank you. We thank you that we get to see this transition. It's been an interesting ride. And, Father, you've been doing some amazing things, but I thank you that, that, that my spiritual father is in this house today. I thank you that the father of, of what we press into as a church here that, that has, has laid the culture and so much of the foundation of this church that he's here today. And we ask God that you would bless them incredibly, that you would bless Dean and Wanda in this next season of their life, God, that there would be an absolutely wonderful outpouring of the spirit and that there would be fruit, God, greater fruit than he's seen up to this point. And we thank you, God, that their lives are filled with your fruit. And we bless you, Lord, and we thank you for what you're doing today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As Dean comes up, come on up, Dean. I'll just just give you this one little plug. Uh, He has a podcast called Foundational. Okay, foundational you. And then, um, and so if you go on to any of your podcast players anywhere you want to do that, foundational you is where you want to go for that. Um, Dean's been doing that. I've kind of been working on the back end of that for him. And we're super grateful. Thank Dean, you, brother. Good to have you here. Honor to be here. <laughs> want to come on up, please. Yeah, it's an honor to be here. And to share this time with you is really special. Uh, when I left here uh, in October, well, uh, yeah, it was October 1, 2007. Mm-hmm. There was, the shell was up, the roof was on, and there were no doors yet, <laughs> and uh, no floor yet, mm-hmm. but uh, uh, it is beautiful to see what God has done. And uh, we were back one time uh, since 2007. Uh, Pastor Chris was gone at that time. He he, and uh, we did. I, you, I preach you, you preaching. You, you were here, preaching right? in Hermiston. I was preaching here. Yep. And uh, it's just an honor to be here with you and Mika and to share this time. And I got some more things that I feel like Father's giving me, but we'll share that in a little bit. Awesome. Thank you for yep. this privilege. Thank you. Bless you. Good to see all of you here. This is my beautiful bride, Wanda. Do you have a mic for her? I can just talk in yours. I can just get close. You can, oh, I like it when you get close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good to be with all of you, and it's wonderful to see so many people that have gathered together when we started here a um, long time 2003. ago. 2003. Yeah, there was hardly yeah. anybody here. The pastor that had started the church had planted it for the first time. Uh, he was blind and deaf. He was a go-getter. I tell you, I so admired both he and his wife because they were very, very old, and uh, yet that never stopped them from doing what they thought God needed to be done, but he knew he couldn't keep on. So I asked him what was the most frustrating thing that he ever experienced here, and he said knowing something was going on out there and not knowing what it was. (laughs) (laughs) So, I mean, um, we took over for him and just moved the church from... Uh, hardly a handful of people to uh, a room full that was over there and so it's and then we did the expansion and God called us to Hermiston and it was a great fit but it's wonderful to see that when God calls us one place that he has a plan for what's left here and it's good to see that that plan is expanded and is doing great it is amen thank you babe Thank you. And uh, she has been my life partner for 53 years now. And uh, it is awesome. I'm so thankful. We celebrated our 53rd anniversary just a couple of weeks ago and just uh, uh, been special. Uh, She was six when we got married. And... uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but uh, it's just, well, truthfully, we, she graduated high school June 6th, and we got married June 27th, and uh, we threatened our children if they even thought about doing something like that, 
but it's worked for us because God's grace was in the middle of it. I, uh, by, by God's grace, I've been, been privileged to, to do some writing. I brought a few books with me. Uh, this one is actually the story of uh, how, how Jesus came into my life and uh, the work he's done uh, through 54 years of ministry. Um, I was, uh, I grew up in Spokane, was a uh, broken human being that uh, thought I was an unlovable human being and thought I was a throwaway child. Uh, and then Christ came into my life and revolutionized all of that when I was in high school. And I uh, graduated from University High School in the Spokane Valley. We played Sandpoint in football. And uh, it always irritated me when we had to come here and play play Sandpoint. It was at the football field that was right by the river, and and these guys were always big, hard loggers guys. <laughs> and and when you would tackle them, or when they would block you, they'd bite you and punch you, and it was just... <laughs> I'm serious. They, they were just, I just go, man, these guys are mean, you know? But then my senior year, you had to come to my field and play us. And we whooped you bad that year. And made up for all the years we got beat really bad up here. Because every time we came up here, you beat us really bad. But, uh, and then God, never dreaming that God would call us here to work. But uh, this, this, uh, this is just, this, like I said, the story of how God transformed my life. And um, uh, this is a, uh, a catechism on the Holy Spirit. It's not a book you just take and read. It really is a, a study, a study guide for for studying the Holy Spirit. And um, uh, I would like to give this to someone. Um, if you are between the ages of thirty-five and fifty, and uh, um, uh, the one who guesses the number that I'm thinking about between one and ten. So 35 to 50, thinking of a number between 1 and 10. Someone just holler out a number. 7. 6. You guessed it right on the number. Here you go. Yep. There you go. What is your name? Micah. Micah? Nice to meet you, Micah. God bless you. I pray that book is awesome. This is the first of a trilogy uh, that I call the Freedom Series. Uh, and uh, this book is on discovering true identity, discovering your true identity and in Jesus Christ. And uh, the next is Caris, which is uh, a study of the work of grace in our life and being able to, to, uh, to, to conquer things through God's grace. The third is uh, Agapeo, or Agape, and it's all about the sufferings of Christ and how every one of the sufferings of Christ won a victory for us in our life. And uh, this is the first series. And uh, I want to give this to someone. And uh, this is all about really being able to conquer uh, rejection and uh, a, 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 poor, a, a poor sense of self-worth. Um, I want to give this to, I'm supposed to give this to uh, a, a gal. Um, and uh, someone that's thinking of a number between 1 and 20. Thir who said 13? Let me see your hand. Did somebody say 13? 14. 14? Okay. Someone else? 17. 17. Who said 17? You guessed it right on the number. Here you go. What is your name? Sheila. Sheila, God bless you, Sheila. Thank, Thank you. You're Thanks. welcome. You're nice to meet you. Here, babe. Let me hand this back to you. Oh, and could you hand me my bottle of water there? Oh, I've got, I've got one I've already oh, partaken from there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Father, speak to us right now. You have a message that you have designed for today that you have planted. Mm. Father, nurture that word. It's, it's Jesus, you said it's like a seed. And I pray that you will water it and nurture it. 
I pray you'll take out the, the stony things that keep it from taking root. I pray you'll plow up the ground so that it can go deep in the soil and through the warmth of your spirit and through your living water, it can nurture and grow. I pray today, Father, you'll pull out the weeds that would keep it and choke it from growing, maturing, and bearing fruit. That today, Father, your word would bring forth 160 and 30-fold to your praise and glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, empower me to speak your word. Holy Spirit, I just yield and surrender to you right this moment. Oh, would everyone just lift your hands to the Lord? There's a wonderful presence of Holy Spirit here. Oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in Jesus' name. Mm. Amen, amen, amen. Well, after 54 years of ministry, Father called Wanda and I into a new field of, of ministry. We're not pastoring now. We had the joy of transitioning my 16 years of pastoral leadership in Hermiston to uh, my son, which is a real joy. We have three children. My son and his wife from Bulgaria is, in, uh, 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 is leading the church there in Hermiston. And then our two daughters went as missionaries to Croatia. One daughter's been there 23 years. Another one's been there 18. They've married Croatian men. So we have Croatian son-in-laws and a Bulgarian daughter-in-law. We raised up really tough kids that couldn't marry Americans. They had to go to Eastern Europe to find their mates. <laughs> But you can't imagine what a joy it is to, uh, to raise up three kids that uh, never went into drugs, never went into alcohol, never really rebelled. I mean, the biggest rebellion we had was our son came home from college with his head shaved wearing earrings. <laughs> That's pretty mild when I've ministered to other families, you know. But he still was loving Jesus. I just couldn't figure out why he wanted a bald head. I mean, I have no bald head, but it's just, <laughs> why would you want to do that on purpose? <clears throat> and, uh, uh, and so it, it, we are so blessed because our kids love Jesus with all their heart, and we've got nine grandchildren, and right now all of them love Jesus, and we are so thankful. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a alcoholic home. Wanda grew up in an alcoholic home. And we said when we got married, we were breaking the curse. We're cutting the curse off in the name of Jesus. Amen. And uh, those things that made me truly believe I was a throwaway human being and unlovable of being loved and unable to love, that those curses were cut off and would not pass down. And it's such a joy, isn't it? Yeah. God loves us so much. And, but after 54 years of uh, pastoral ministry, we are, now, we are now mentoring and coaching pastors and their leadership teams, ministry called Maximum. And we are so blessed to be able to do that. And the podcast that, uh, that, I, that I have comes out every Friday on, on I think it's 20 some podcast platforms it comes out on every Friday. And uh, it's, just, uh, it's just 15 minutes of uh, just speaking a current word to this generation. And then, um, and then on Thursday nights on Zoom, we lead a Bible study. And we just launched a study through the book of Genesis. We finished e Hebrews and we're just going into the book of Genesis. And that's on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock um, Pacific time. And uh, on Zoom. And uh, if you're interested, uh, I've got a business card back there that's got uh, my information on it. And you can shoot me a text or shoot me an email and say, hey, I want to I join that study. Send me the study guide because uh, each week I send out a study guide that goes with that, with that Thursday's study. And so uh, we, we'd be glad to, if you want to join us. I don't want to don't take away from anything that's happening here on a Thursday night. I don't know if you have anything happening here on Thursday night, but if so, I don't want to take away from it, you know. But if you want to join us, you'd be welcome to do that. 
One of the things that Father gave me about today, and uh, boy, we had a great time with Maximum here yesterday, uh, coaching your, your team and, and uh, two other teams that were here. Um, but as I, as I have been here, God just keeps speaking this same thing to me. I'm going to share it with you now. And I shared this briefly with Pastor Chris. Oh, there you are. And uh, you, you said yay. And, uh, uh, and so I'm, I'm going to share a little fuller word with it. Judge and your leadership. Am I doing something that's making a cut in and out? Okay. You and your leadership team can judge. That, that is a word for the house. Here's what God showed me. He showed me the prayers of this house coming together, being poured into a brass basin. In Scripture, it's called a censer. Brass basin. And the Lord Jesus Christ was taking that like coals of fire and pouring it on greater sandpoint. Your prayers united together, being poured out on greater sandpoint. All the way from, from Bonners Ferry, clear on down past Garfield Bay and, uh, and a little south of there, and just, just covering this area, all of greater sandpoint, covering it. And as those prayers were poured out, captives were being released. Jewels, treasures, that are living up in the valleys and on the sides of the mountains and in all of the communities, treasures being set free, being released, and a flood coming into this house, and this house just being filled and overflowing of the treasures that were being released and because of the captives that were being set free. A great harvest, a great harvest. A great harvest. And, and what, what was, there, there were two things that was, that was just significant about what he showed me. One was that it was happening soon. Not like way down the road. But this is like something you're stepping into. It's happening, it's happening soon. But the other is that your prayers must become very earnest, very intentional, very powerful that you've got to unite your prayers and you've you've just you listen do not grow weary in praying increase your praying because this is the season this is the time God has appointed I just sense that for this house it's going gonna, it's gonna to f- fill up. The empty chairs you've got aren't going to stay empty. If you stay faithful in your praying and you keep uniting and praying. Really, that's the key. It's prayer. It's prayer. John the Baptist. Um, I don't know how we got to that slide because that's way down. I'm looking for slide number one. That's about number two or three. And my, 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 I turned my clicker on. I got a green light. Oh, I didn't. I just got a green light. It said go. There we go. Super duper. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Yep. There we are. Thank you. John, John the Baptist came preaching that there was one coming after him whose sandals, he wasn't even worthy to slip on his feet and tie and untie. But then he said this about him. He said, But this one that's coming, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And and both of those things, Holy Spirit and fire. 
He's going to come. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That was a prophetic word about whom? The Holy Spirit. I'm sorry? The Holy Spirit. About Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Exactly. But Jesus, Jesus is the He. Right? Okay, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, you got to understand something about the word bab- baptize. Baptize, the English word, is a transliteration. Transliteration means they took the original word and they Englishized it. <laughs> okay, that's not, a, that's not a real word, but I just made it up. Okay. And baptizo is the Greek word. And so you can, I mean, just hearing that, you know, oh, that's baptized, right? Baptizo. Baptizo in classical Greek had two meanings. It was used for dyeing a garment. So they would take this cloth that they had, that they had woven, and they would take that cloth, and they would baptize it in a vat of dye, And they would leave it in that vat of dye until every fiber had become saturated with that dye. Then they would lift it out. And that cloth had been baptized in the dye. Another way it was used in classical Greek was the the smith would take the metal and he would fire it until it was white hot and then he would hammer it and then he would baptize it in oil and then he would take it out and fire it what was he doing he was taking that metal that was going to be shaped into a sword and he was hardening it and he was hardening that metal by firing it and baptizing it. And it would become this hard metal from which he could then make the sword and sharpen it. Those were the words for, or the meaning of the word baptizo, we get baptized. John is saying, there's one coming after me. He's going to baptize you. With the Holy Spirit. He is going to saturate you with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit colors your life. And He is going to fire you and baptize you in the oil of the Holy Spirit so that He can harden you and make you a mighty weapon in the hands of of Almighty God. Now, just three years later, Jesus is on the night of his betrayal. And he's meeting with his disciples. It it was an interesting journey because they started that evening in the upper room, which was on the edge of Mount Zion, which is kind of the southeast corn, southern corner of Jerusalem. And they're meeting in the upper room, and they've had the Pesach Seder. He's talked with them. They've celebrated. But he wants to go to prayer because his time of betrayal has come. And so they leave the upper room in Mount Zion, Across the Tyropenian Valley, which separates the old city of Jerusalem, east and west. They go either either they go over the Temple Mount or they go around the Temple Mount. Then they cross the Kidron Valley into a garden that was a oil press, the Garden of Gethsemane. On that journey, because that's, that's, that's a bit of a journey. And on that journey, Jesus is teaching his disciples. And one of the things he says to them is, that's recorded for us in John 14. He says, truly, truly, I say to you. Now, it's interesting because he's using 
a, a Hebrew uh, grammatical structure there. In the Old Testament, how many remember in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 6, the angel is saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, right? Well, what in the, in the, in the, in the, we're just repeating that in English, but it's not that way in Hebrew. In Hebrew, he is saying, God is holy to the third power. And so in the New Testament, when you see this verily, verily in the old King James, or in most modern translations call it truly, truly, what he, Jesus is saying is, I'm telling you the truth to the second power. We would kind of say it this way, look, I'm telling you the truth, it really is the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And what's he saying? He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall ye do also, and greater works than these shall ye do. Why? Because I go to my Father. Amen. If ye ask anything in my name, thou will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will send you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, yeah. whom the world cannot receive, because it knoweth him not. It seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. Wow! Jesus that night is saying something brand new is coming to the kingdom. Holy Spirit in the Old Testament was not in people. He would come upon them. But, and, that, and that was really recorded very few. You know, Samson, I, I, movies portray Samson like he was an Arnold Schwarzenegger or something, you know? I, I, think, I think Samson was kind of a wimp, really. I think he was kind of like me, just an ordinary guy, kind of like Pastor Chris, just an ordinary guy. The Holy Spirit would come on him. And if you look in Scripture, every time Samson did something great, it said, and the Holy Spirit came upon him. Yeah. It wasn't because Samson was amazing, and so he was, he gathered, and he, he, you know, he grabbed all those foxes and tied their tails together. Holy Spirit helped him to do that. It was Holy Spirit that helped him to get the, job, the, the jawbone of a donkey and beat that army. It was, it was Holy Spirit that enabled him to break the chains. It wasn't because Samson was so great. It was because Holy Spirit was working upon him. Same with Elijah. Same with Elisha. Same with Moses. Moses. Once you go do that. I, man, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. No, I can't. I really, really can't. Hey, Bo, what's in your hand? A stick. You see a stick. I see a miracle worker. You get it? But that's Old Testament. Jesus is saying it's changing. Something dramatic is changing in the kingdom. Because Holy Spirit will be in you. But he didn't stop there. What's 40 days later? Same Jesus. Same disciples. Jesus is about to be beamed up into heaven. Okay. By the way, isn't that an amazing story? They're standing on the Mount of Olives and suddenly he starts levitating. And he just goes. And he just keeps going. Clear past the couch. He just keeps going. And then something really weird happens. There's these angels that appear and they go, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? Well, duh! When's the last time you saw somebody levitate clear off the earth and up into the third heaven? What do you mean, why did I stay? Whoo! But then, of course, they give that amazing promise that we all are going to get to see this same Jesus, this same Jesus. Not a reasonable facsimile, not Michael, not Gabriel. This same Jesus will call, so come in like manner as you've seen him go. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Come on, amen. 
But before that happened, Jesus has this conversation. It's recorded for us in Luke chapter 24, verses 47, 48, and 49. And he says, listen, I've given you the great commission, but don't go do anything. Tarry in Jerusalem until you've received the promise of the Father. What is it? You shall be clothed with power from on high. Well, how's that going to happen? Acts chapter 1 records it. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. But now listen. The whole thing about receiving the promise of the Father and being clothed with power. Literally, it is saying, Almighty God is going to have you put on the Holy Spirit like a garment. And so Holy Spirit is not only going to be in you, Holy Spirit is going to be on you like a garment. In other words, what he is saying is exactly what John the Baptist said. Because Jesus said, you will be baptized as John baptized with water. Ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And so what's going to happen is Holy Spirit's going to dwell in you. But then Holy Spirit also is going to saturate you. Because Almighty God wants you to have this supernatural clothing of a divine and enablement that will enable you to do more than you ever dreamed you could do. What's going on here? What is exactly happening? Well, Hebrews chapter 2 verses 5 to 9 tells us exactly what is going on. Because listen, there is coming a paradigm shift in the kingdom of Almighty God. A paradigm shift is taking place. He says, he says, to angels was not given the stewardship of the earth that is coming, as we have spoken of. For one in a certain place has testified. I love that about the writer of Hebrews, because he's kind of like me. He doesn't always remember the exact address. He remembers what it says, but he doesn't always remember the exact address. And what he does, then he quotes Psalm 8, 4 to 8. One in a certain place testifies. What is man if thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou hast made him of the Lord and the angels. Thou hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou hast given him dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Isn't that? Now listen to that. Listen to what he's saying. The writer of Hebrews is referring to God's original design. He's referring to God's original design. Genesis 1, 27 and 28. God said, let us make man in our own image. And God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, take dominion. It's interesting because in that blessing, the word subdue and dominion are military terms. Why would God, when he's blessing the original couple, when he's made them, why would he use military terms when he's blessing them? Simple reason, because Planet Earth was the atmosphere for which Lucifer had been cast out of heaven into the atmosphere of this planet that was without form and void. This was his region for he and his fallen angels. This was his dominion. This was his kingdom. But Almighty God came and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep and God began recreating planet Earth because he was going to populate planet Earth with a whole new species of being. And when you, when you go through those six days of creation of what God did and how God recreated the earth, he recreated this planet with a tolerance that is so precise that even the slightest variation 
human life would not be able to be sustained. But he created it so that human life, because the zenith of his creation was going to be held. And when he got to day six, and he had made the birds and the fish and the cattle of the field, then there was a council held in heaven between the Trinity. And the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit began talking. And they said, okay, what's next? And in that conference of the Trinity, they said, let's make a new species of being. And let's use our image for the template. And so God made the decision to make human beings in his image with a human body. And that human body had one specific purpose. It would be the temple of Holy Spirit. And when he created Adam and Eve, they were the temple of Holy Spirit. And they they were so filled with the glory of Almighty God, they didn't have to wear clothes because they were not naked because they were clothed in the glory of Almighty God because Holy Spirit was in them and Holy Spirit clothed them. Are you getting it? What's coming next? They fell into sin. They lost the cloth. They lost the presence. But the writer of Hebrews didn't stop with just Psalm 8, 4 to 8. He goes on and he says, he left nothing that was not put under them. Listen, but we do not yet see all things put under him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor, that he might taste death for all men. Why? Because through the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, He's going back to Father. And when He gets back to Father, He's going to appeal to Father and say, Now, Father, send the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to come, and He will dwell in you, and He will baptize you. And when He dwells in you, and He baptizes you, you will have the presence of Almighty God living in you. You will be the temple of the Holy Spirit, but He will also so clothe you and you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit and you will have a divine enablement that will enable you to live a life that is extraordinary because God will be able to do abundantly above and beyond all that you could imagine or think. You see, Almighty God knew something. <laughs> Look to your neighbor on your right and your left. Even if you got to look over an aisle to see a neighbor on your left or right. Okay, okay, look at that. Okay. How many of them are in a carnal body? Excuse me? Everybody. Uh, excuse me? Everybody. Everybody? How many are all in a carnal body? How many find your carnal body doesn't always want to do right? For as by one man's sin, death entered the world, so death passed upon all men. By one man's righteousness passed upon all men. See, God knew, I'm going to do something amazing. I'm going to save them. I'm going to make them a new creation. But I'm going to leave them in a carnal body for a while. And in that carnal body, they're going to struggle to do right. But I'm going to give them a divine enablement, a divine power. He will live in them and he will clothe them. I'm going to live them, leave them in a fallen world that is hypersexualized, that is secular and humanist and rationalists and pragmatic.
And into that culture, I am going to empower them to live radically different. But they can't do it on their own. That's right. Sir, you can't, you, can't, you can't do it on your own. I have people say to me, Dean, I, you know, I, I, can't, I can't be a Christian. I could never live the life. I go, you're right. You can't. They look at me kind of funnily. You're a pastor and you're agreeing with that? You, no, you can't live it. I can't live it. That's right. Amen. That's why he gives us Holy Spirit. That's why he does two things. He gives us the washing of regeneration, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. That gives us a new heart. But it doesn't just give us a new heart inside. Then Holy Spirit will clothe us and empower us. And so then there can be those days when he goes, flesh, stop it, behave. Holy Spirit, take over. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Come on. I just yield to you, Holy Spirit. I just yield to you. Amen. Yeah. I really right now want to give that person a piece of my mind that I can ill afford to give away. <laughs> I want to fix their headlights for them. Holy Spirit, you want to bless them. You want to do good to them. You want to speak good into their life. Okay, Holy Spirit, you take control of this tongue, because this tongue wants to set a fire right now. Holy Spirit, you want, you want to pour oil right now. Making sense what I'm saying? See, it's by divine enablement. Go with me now to Ephesians chapter 5. I'm going to wrap up with this. And I apologize. I didn't look to see when I started. It's okay. I should be done by, I should be done by 2 o'clock. It'll be okay, guys. <laughs> Therefore, be ye imitators of God as dear children. And love as Christ has loved you. Do you see that in there? Imitators. It's a Greek word. Mimetes. And it means to imitate or to play a role as an actor or actress, right? Only in this case, it's giving something more. Because mimetes, when you and I are thinking about it, as think of this role. A little girl, and she gets into mommy's clothes or mommy's makeup. And she, because she wants to be like mom. She wants to pretend like she's mom, right? Or a little boy. He gets in dad's closet and he slips on dad's shoes and he comes out walking in because he wants to be like dad. Or he wants to shave like dad. And so he puts on all the, you know? That's mamates. So good. But in this case, in this case, it's saying, be imitators of your heavenly Father as dear children. Mm. Not in the sense of to role play, but in the sense of genuinely seeking to take on the spirit and the character of Heavenly Father. I got to share with you something Father spoke to me as we were worshiping. It wasn't in my notes for today. But sir, you have real trouble with thinking of God the Father and trying to get into that deep personal relationship with Heavenly Father in worship that the worship team talks about and you see them flowing into. 
And the reason is because you grew up with a father that was not kind. He was not gracious. You heard these words over and over again. You're so stupid. Can't you do anything right? You grew up without a father. And the way you found out what it was like to be a man was when you had your first experience with a woman. That was what you thought took you into manhood. And Almighty God is wanting you to understand something, sir. There's a Heavenly Father. And what He has spoken over your life from the day you were born is I know the thoughts I have for you, saith the Lord. Thoughts for good and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. That's been his thoughts and his words over you, sir. All your life. And he wants to share those with you in a deep personal way. That is deeper than anything you've ever known. But he has those words for you. July 3rd, 1964 was when my heart changed. I was at Sanders Camp, Idaho. Don't know if you've ever been to that free Methodist camp there at Sanders. The big old tabernacle with a sawdust floor, literally with a sawdust floor. <clears throat> big old bull pine altar down front. Big bull pine pillars that hold that thing up. Wooden, rough wooden benches. And I'm sitting on the very back wooden bench. I went to that camp to run in a track meet and to meet chicks. I was running in a track meet and I was hoping to get chicks out in the bushes. That's, listen, that, I, I didn't know nothing about Christ. I wasn't hungry after God. I, didn't, I, 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 uh, I can't tell you how many times I thought about God. I'd walk the north side of Spokane and get down to Indiana Avenue and where the Assembly of God was at and, and the, the Christian Science Church was there and an open Bible with a big neon Bible that blinked. And I, I, and I think, I wonder, is God... A, no, God wouldn't think about me. I'm not even a lovable human being. I'm a throwaway human being. God wouldn't think about me. That, that, was, that was my thoughts about God. But that night, July, July 3rd, 1964... Almighty God broke into my hard heart. I'd made a vow at the age of five I'd never cry again. It didn't matter how hard you beat me. I wouldn't cry. His heart was like a rock. But sitting there listening to Reverend Kirkpatrick preach about the love of God, tears started coming out. I thought, what are you doing? Wipe my eyes. My heart started, I could feel it. God changed my heart that night. But I didn't learn the father heart of God until August of 1982. In a lengthy season of fasting and praying, one day in prayer, sir, I'm seeking God and almighty God Look into my heart. I hear were the words I heard. You please me so much. I am so proud of you. And I fell on this. Oh God, forgive me for that arrogant thought. Oh God. And I repented of that arrogant thought. <laughs> and I got up. And I heard the voice again. I fell on my face again. God, forgive, I, forgive me for this arrogance. And I got up, and I heard it a third time. But this time, I heard these words first. How dare you think that the words I am speaking to you are proud and arrogant. I want you to know, as my son, how proud I am of you. And how you please me. 
And now you please me. I had been in full-time ministry by that time, 11 years, Pastor Chris. I hadn't yet learned the Father heart of God. I was serving Jesus. I had the power of the Holy Spirit, seeing miracles and signs yeah. and wonders. Yeah. But I hadn't learned the Father heart of God yet. Yeah, come on. Be imitators as dear children. Father loves you, sir. And he wants you to know his Father heart. Sis, listen to me. Men have abused you all your life. You didn't grow up with a father that affirmed you and encouraged you, spoke good of you. And you, you got into middle school and high school with this huge hole in your heart, wanting affirmation, wanting acceptance, wanting to know that you were valued and you were loved. And so when guys would say to you, I love you, you would open your heart to them, but they would use you. Now, when you got married... You didn't find a guy who really loved you. You felt like all he wanted was your body. You didn't feel loved and valued. And, to, and you love Jesus with all your heart, but you have real trouble loving Heavenly Father. You can't say, Abba, Father, I love you so much. And Abba, you love me. See, Abba is the Semitic word for Daddy. And you can't say daddy because you can't relate to daddy God. Jesus is fine. Daddy God, you have trouble. And almighty God is saying to you today, oh my daughter, run into my arms and let your daddy hold you. I love you. I'm your father. I love you. I'm your father. And I tell you, I tell you, sis, when you learn the father heart of God and how he loves you, it revolutionizes everything. 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 Papa has that for you today. He loves you. Would you bow your heart with me? Holy Spirit, right now across this room, you're ministering in such a beautiful way. Holy Spirit, I just see you touching hearts right now. You're ministering to hearts right now. And I thank you. I give you praise for that. And Holy Spirit, I'm asking that you will reveal to hearts. May they let you, Holy Spirit, Draw them to daddy. May they let you draw them into daddy's heart. Oh, yes. Come on. Holy Spirit's working. Let him work. Let him work. Let him soften your heart. He's drawing you close, sir. He wants you close. He wants to, he wants to take his hand and wipe out everything that's been said about you, about how you're stupid, about how you can't do anything right, about how you failed. He's wanting to wipe out everything that has caused you shame and humiliation. And he's wanting to affirm your heart as his son. You are his son and he loves you. You are his son and he loves you. Pastor Chris, help me get to the next couple of slides. We've got to read something together. I'm going to ask everyone, would you stand with me? And I'd like you to read this out loud with me, would you please? Everyone out loud. Therefore, come from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean. I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty.
That last part again, everyone together twice as loud. I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. As Father's word to you right now. To you. Sir, if you've had trouble relating the Heavenly Father to Almighty God, did you go, Dean, I want this today. I want my Heavenly Father's love in my life, and I want to love Him with all my heart. I want to pray for you right now. Would you just step out from where you are, sir? Come on down here. No one's going to think negative of you because in just a moment the gals are going to come. You go, that's me. I want that in my life. I want that in my life. I really do. I want that. Thank you for joining us today. Harvest Valley Worship Center is called to be a refuge for healing and a launch pad for transformation. If this message impacted you today, please let us know in a comment, or you can email us at media at hvwc.com. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to connecting with you.